In today's video, we're going to talk about how you control access to your app. There's a couple different ways you can control access to apps, whether it's going to be security roles and your teams or a variation on some of those things. And then you've got security groups through Entra or Azure Active Directory. So you could do it a couple different ways on how you want to manage it. In this particular video, I'm going to explain how you can use security roles from the Power Platform paired with creating teams in order to control access to your apps. So what does that look like? Now, this is an app that I built on this channel last week or the week before. If you want to check out the full build of this app, go ahead and check out this video here. And I walk through in there how to create essentially this entire app. But in that particular video, there's a couple things that I didn't do that I did kind of after the facts. So I'm going to walk through the security portion of this build in this video because that other video was already two hours long and uh, I didn't know that there'd be any interest in seeing this, but then I thought about it afterwards and I could see this being something that people want to learn or understand how to do. So that's why I'm deciding to do this video now. Check out the video if you want to see how this app is built and then this video will kind of walk through the security for this application. So if we come down here, let's go ahead and select the admin area. And we've got a couple different things in here. We've got data source types, your app criticalities, and then you got access control. So if I click on this, I've got essentially three different teams that I've created. And each one of these teams has an associated security role that I created. So if we click on, for example, view only, users in this view are only going to be able to view items within the application. They're not going to be able to do anything else. They won't be able to access the admin area. So they won't even see this admin option down here because they don't have access to anything for here. And then they'll only be able to access the viewing of various forms and, and views. And you can further tailor it and say only certain forms or only certain views are accessible by view onlys. And that applies to each of these different rules that we're going to talk about in here. If we go back, if we look at our admin, now your admin would be able to see the admin area here and have basically complete editing capability for everything inside of this app. It can change anything in here. And again, all this is completely configurable, but right now I don't have anybody added to it, but all I would do is click add existing user. And then I could look for, for example, myself, and I could add myself into the admin group for this. Now I can access this as a system administrator for this and, and the builder for everything. So that's why I don't need to be in there in order to access it. But everybody else pretty much outside your system admin would need to be added into this for this to work correctly. And kind of the same thing for our contributor. Now contributors can't see the admin area. They can't update data source types and app criticalities, but they can add items to it, modify the items. They can do a lot of different things inside the app. They just can't really do a lot of the admin functions specifically. So this would be their people that are creating different apps and tools and adding them into the tool and then maintaining the data about those. That's essentially what this would be. So that's essentially the layout. Now, how do you actually create this? Well, for that, let's go over to the Power Platform Admin Center. Now, in the Admin Center, you're going to see a couple different options. Now, this is the environment where that application was built, and you're going to see security rules. So let's go over and hit See All here. Now, what I usually recommend doing is duplicating your basic user. So all you would do is click Copy here and then rename it to whatever you want to name it as. I usually keep basic user in the title, but you don't have to do that. And the reason why I say use basic user is because basic user, everybody already has access to. Anyway, if we cancel this out of here and we go to view members, here's where all of your members, and this is just my platform, so I don't have any other members. It's just kind of my channel and, and what I do. But if I did have other people, they would all be listed right here, everybody. And if you go to your current organization and you click on environment, more than likely you're going to have all of your employees essentially that have accounts are going to be listed right here. In the case of like a federal government organization, that could be tens of thousands of people that have been added in here. They all have basic user by default. So it's a great security rule to copy as a baseline for everything else you're going to do. It will ensure that your dataverse environment works correctly. Now, what do I mean by works correctly? For example, you need access to the users table and able to do a lot of the different lookups. If you don't give access to the users table, you won't be able to do a lot of things. You're going to run into a lot of permissions issues or even security roles is its own dataverse table. 
if you don't set up permissions as part of a, a new security role that isn't based off basic user, none of that stuff is going to work. So you got to make sure that if you're starting from scratch, you have a good understanding of what's necessary inside of the environment in order for you to do just basic things. All right, let's go ahead and hit the security role area here again. So that's your basic user. And if we click on this and look at this, we'll see kind of what I'm talking about here. So here's all of the different tables and you can see there's all these different permissions to a lot of different things right off the bat. Most of it's just read only. But if we look up, for example, the users table, and if we look at our users table here, we can see that read is organization, append is your business unit, and then they get your append two over here, also business unit. So if you didn't do that and you actually leverage the users table, you're going to run into a lot of different issues. And same thing with the team, which I just mentioned a few minutes ago. There's basic default access that's already provided to all users that you would need to account for. And if we look at everything, you can see there's a lot of permissions like that. This is out of the box. I haven't changed anything in here. This is what your basic user automatically looks like when you do this. So I always recommend just for uh, your sanity to duplicate the basic user when you're going to create new security roles. All right, let's go back to security roles here. Now, in the case of the app that I just showed you, let's type in digital. And we can see we've got these three in here. And if we click on admin, for example, now my prefix is OSP, and we'll see that I've essentially given full rights to the admin group. So everything that I've created as part of that particular application, they have full rights to make modifications to, which makes it so that they can do all the different things that are necessary. And again, similarly, if we go ahead and look at our view only one, we'll see that most of it is just read only. See, we can see we've got read only at the organizational level, but no other permissions. This gives them the ability to open everything up and view everything, but not actually change anything. So that's essentially how these are kind of set up, at least at the security role. Now let's go back to our main environment here. Now in the teams area, you're going to have something very similar. So we've got, the option to create a team and then you can create these teams let's resize this so we can see what we're talking about here now i typically keep the naming convention the same as the security roles it just makes things align a little bit easier and if we go ahead and click on admin here you can see that we've got some options manage team members so i can go through and, and add people just like we were inside of the app you could do it here also if we go back here again let's look at the admin one here manage security roles and what we're going to see if we scroll down is that the security role that's been assigned is the one that we created for it so essentially once we add everybody to the team they're going to inherit all the permissions that we gave in the security role and it really is just that simple on how you could use a team and if you use security groups like i mentioned using entra or the azure security groups it's very similar except for you create the security groups and you assign the people to the security groups and then you put the security group with the security role that you create and that works also it's a little bit more complicated for adding people to it seamlessly from the app interaction because you have to use power automate if you want to actually do it from the app you could also do it from entra or azure if you want to but i typically try to make it so it just kind of runs from the application just to make it easier on the user let's go ahead and click the cancel here so we've essentially at this point created our security roles and then we've also created our teams so now what do we need to do now, once we've created what we want to do is bring the security roles into our solution. So here's where I would add them into the solution. And then when you go to the app here, let's go ahead and share our app. And when we share our app, what we're going to see is that we've got the ability to select our app and we're going to go find those security roles that we shared. And as we can see, they're right here. Now, in this particular app, because again, it's just me, I didn't really worry about this, but you would essentially add these three and then hit share. So now the app will see those security roles and on other permissions that you put inside of them. Let's go ahead and close this out. Now, the next step you wanna do is take a look at your table structure. 
Now for my tables, these are all the tables I created as part of this app, but you're also gonna see that I've got the team added here also. Now I didn't do this part of the video, so this is something I did a little extra. Now you have to be careful with working with team. You wanna make sure that you're not modifying the existing structure of the team. You can add and create views and forms, but you don't wanna necessarily do a lot of adjustments to the tables because when you're moving this between environments, that table is going to cross over the environments and you can run into some problems if you customize your environment too much where you run into a lot of dependencies where essentially you're bringing your entire environment into the solution and then exporting it to the new environment. You don't want to have to do that. You want to keep it kind of clean. So when you modify the team, one of the things that I like to do is I create new views and forms and in this case, I created one. So this is the one that I created for the view. And then for the form, I did kind of the same thing. I created this modified team form. And when I brought it into this environment, I customized what I brought in to only bring what I created. So let's go ahead and give an example of this. So let's go to all, and then we're gonna add an existing table. And we'll just do a count for demonstration purposes here. When I hit next, you have the option of include all objects, include table metadata, but you can also go here and edit objects. And I ignore everything on all these things except for the view. And the view that I create is what I'm looking for. I wanna bring in that view, and then I wanna bring in whatever form that I created. I wanna bring those two items in. That way I'm, I'm doing the least amount of modification to a system table because I don't want to have a lot of issues when I put this into different environments. That's essentially what I'm trying to avoid by doing this. So I'll bring those in and then I'll add it into my solution and it'll bring in just those two views causing the most minimal amount of adjustment to the environment system tables. Let's get cancel there and then we'll go back in here. Now, once I've done that, I've created my view, I've created my form. The next thing you got to do is add it into your application. So let's go to our app and we'll go ahead and edit our app. Now, in the case of this app, I created areas. So let's go ahead and look at the admin area here. Now, what you have to do next is go up here to add page and you're gonna do a dataverse table and then you're just gonna find the dataverse table team and add it in here. Now, I've already got it here, so I don't need to worry about that. And then I'm gonna see the view that I created. And if I click on this, we'll see the form that I created. And essentially, all I did was really just duplicate an existing view in a form that I liked and then change the name of it. That's really the only thing that I did. And then also, one thing you're going to want to do is filter as part of this creation. So I only want them to see the teams that I created. I don't want them to see every single team that's in the environment. So you do want to put a filter on. In the case of this one, I created a filter that says, if it starts with digital resource tracker, I want them to see it. If it doesn't, I don't want them to see it. That limits their ability to adjust and change other teams. It also just kind of focuses them on the things that matter for this particular app. But that's one thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you create your view. If you want a separate video where I go through step-by-step step and actually do this, let me know in the comments, and then I'll try to put together a video for an app and actually go step-by-step step on exactly what this process is. I think this demo of kind of just a walkthrough is probably good for most people, but I'm happy to create a video just for this and put it out there, or maybe I include it as part of the next app build. We'll, we'll see what works best, but just let me know in the comments. And then once you've got that in here, what you're gonna to wanna to do is, let's go ahead and close this and then make this a little bit bigger here. And what we wanna do is go ahead and select our access control view. And then we're gonna to go to our settings here and our advanced settings. And what we wanna do is add a table privilege, right? So we're gonna click add and we're gonna select the teams table. Now in this case, I'm not gonna see team because I've already set it up. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got set up here. Essentially, I've used the append to. So if you've got the ability to append to, then you're gonna see this. If you don't, then you're not gonna be able to do this. So let's go see exactly what this looks like. All right, so from our admin center, let's go to security roles. And then let's go ahead and find our digital. And if we click on our admin, now let's go ahead and find our team table. And we can see if we scroll over here, it's got a pen to, right? So we've got business unit append to here. 
Now, if we go to a different security role and we see view only, for example, let's look for our team. Here's our team, and if we scroll over, there's no append to, and there's no append to on our contributor either. So what that effectively does, it says, those two can't see it because they don't have a pen too. And you would essentially do that for any table. So for example, app criticalities or your data source types. If you don't want people to be able to edit or see this information, then you're going to go through and adjust the privileges so that they don't see it. And that effectively makes it so they can't see the admin area either because they don't have any, they don't have the specific privileges necessary to access this particular view in this table, if that makes sense. Now the outcome essentially is, is that you've got a very easy, very user-friendly approach for managing access to this application. All you need to do if you need to add somebody that can see the app is go into here and add them in there. And all of a sudden they're going to have access to the app and be able to view the underlying table structure. Similarly with app criticalities or data sources, all you have to do is adjust the settings. You could do the same thing with your forms and your views as you could adjust which security roles can access things. So if we take a look at our teams and our views, we can go ahead and select this and then look at our settings. And we can see that we have the option to specify specific security roles. So you can again, limit this down based off of which security role and you can create different security roles that do different things but you could essentially limit which views people can and what that allows you to do is you can pick and choose which columns of data or potentially which rows of data each security role has the ability to see again very powerful usage of dataverse to be able to control everything that a user can or should not be able to do inside of an app well, that's pretty much it for today's video. Hope you found the content helpful. Again, let me know in the comments if you want me to do a video where I actually walk through and do each of these different steps so you can see the entire process from beginning to end. All right, until next time.